What is up everybody and welcome back to another video. I finally bought my first big white lens ever. This is the Canon EF 70 to 200. It's a 2.8 all the way through L lens. It is EF mount. So even though I use RF cameras, I decided to go with the EF version of this lens. And the reason is cost. Um, I bought this on eBay from a reputable camera store. It came pretty much flawless. It looks like it's mint, but I saved $1,000, uh, a little more over what the RF mount version of this lens would be. And optically, they review very, very similar. So I think the RF costs about $2,600. This one was listed, I think, for about a little over $1,500. They had the make me an offer. I offered $1,300. They counter offered. But all said and done with taxes and shipping, I paid $1,500 for this lens. Um, I do have to use the adapter, so that is an additional cost. But I already own two of the adapters because I already adapt EF glass to my RF mirrorless Canon cameras. So. The only the reason I did go with it is totally cost based. The advantages of the RF lens, from what I understand, is just that it's external zooming, so the RF lens will fit much more easily in your bag, which could be an issue at times. I have found that in the bags that I use over my shoulder, this lens does not fit on the camera body closed in my bags, or the bags aren't, I can't close the bags with this on the body. So I do put it in with a different lens mounted. I would never just be bringing a 70 to 200 to a shoot anyways, so not a huge deal, but I could definitely see the benefit of having a lighter and a smaller folding lens. One of the advantages some people think though of having an internally zooming lens is that uh, the weather ceiling would be better. So it's zooming on the inside, the length always stays the same. And so, well, the zoom ring is actually over here. This is the focus ring. But, you know, I'm not a sports photographer. That's no issue to me. So really, cost is the reason to go with the EF in my case. Um, this lens is essentially the same as the version 2, some different coatings and stuff like that. Same design, same elements, uh, same stabilization. So if someone was interested in trying to save even more money, a version 2 of this lens might even do better. Another lens I looked at to consider saving even more money was the Sigma EF mount version, 70 to 200 f2.8 all the way through. That lens was very compelling, and the reviews I watched, everybody reviewed it saying it was pretty close optically to the Canon version and a way in the EF days to save even more money. The reason I didn't end up going with that is from everything I've read, when you use the adapter, the image stabilization in the lens will not work with the image stabilization in the camera body and the, the R5. Um, and for me, being that that would, is the body it'll be on almost all the time, that was a big deal. Because I'm not using this as a sports lens for the most part. I will be using this when people are giving speeches or, you know, someone's getting a ward and they stop and freeze. So in low light, the extra stabilization will really matter to me because my subjects, in, for the most part, won't be moving very fast. So I just decided to stick with Canon so I know that everything would be working together and I'd be able to, I'd be able to maximize the stabilization characteristics. The adapters are... They were completely flawless. This lens works on the R5 and the R8 like it's a native lens. You get the stabilization characteristics and the autofocus works perfect. I've used it for two big gigs already and one was two days long. So I've taken over 2000 photos already with this lens and there have been no no noticeable issues with it working with the mirrorless Canon cameras with the RF mounts. When I use it on the R5, I'll use it with the the adapter that has no control ring when I use it on the R8. Uh, any lens on the R8 I like to use with something with a control ring. That control ring is on this camera right now as I'm using another EF lens to film this. The reason is this camera only has two dials, so what I do when I use this, I set up the control ring to be aperture. For me, that keeps it so the other two dials function like they would on their ISO and shutter speed for me. And then moving the aperture to the lens is very natural to me as I also do film photography, so I'm used to my hand being in that position to adjust those settings. So why after all this time would I finally buy a 70 to 200? Uh, the longest lens I've been using is the kit lens that came with the R5. It is a 24 to 105 f4 lens. And I've always been someone who is like, well, I'll just zoom with my feet. I'll just get in a little closer. And I could also crop. I am not afraid to crop. I'm not Jared Pollan. Um, I don't mind cropping on a camera that's 45 megapixels. It, Cropping even looked fine on my 5D4, and I was even doing it before that with cameras that were lower megapixels. The thing is that I've been to some events, and one that really kind of pushed me over the edge was at the University of Akron last week, 
and there was no aisles cut out and I had to walk into the center of the ta tables to get the shot of the speakers and the awards and all that. That is something I have to do, you know, anyways, but I was just like, you know, if I had the longer lens, this is a time where I would be able to stand back and get tighter shots without having to be as disruptive. So that really started to, I wanted the length, but also this lens being an F4, I was also at a very dark event and the 2.8 really became appealing. So it's a combination of that. So to be able to shoot at 200 at a 2.8, is awesome because I'm getting that length, I'm getting that brighter light. But also if you are gonna crop from 105 to something that look like a 200 and I have to bump the ISO up, once you crop, the noise does become more apparent. At most events, noise isn't a huge situation for what's going on, but I have just been in case, cases where there's no light on the speaker or I was at one where they were having like a dance element and they were, they were just doing a little speech type thing during it and it was just a dark, dark room and 2.8 would have made a really big difference. The other long lens that I have is the Sigma and this is a Sigma 105 um, F1.4. So I have brought this lens to events and it's a prime but thrown it on my camera when I wanted to be able to shoot at 1.4 and that's really nice. Um, Obviously, switching between primes at events is less than ideal. And if you look, even though this lens lengthwise is much smaller, uh, this giant glass element is crazy. Uh, it focuses fast enough, it moves the elements fast enough for what I'm doing, but it's, you know, like I said, it's just not ideal. And one, the 1 1.4 and the brighter light is great, but again, it's just, it's not enough to deal with a prime lens at an, an event. This lens will still be a lens that I will use for portraits. Um, it's, it's a beautiful portrait lens. 105-1.4 makes amazing shots. When I do the rare wedding photography thing, I love doing couples standing way back and getting the shot with that. It's got a great cir circular bouquet and everything like that. So it has its place, but it's not an event lens. If I'm gonna be shooting at 105, I'll end up using this. The other thing about the 2.8, besides just it being brighter, is that I do a lot of candids at events. And so I'm always shooting like, you know, across the room at 105, just not to be up on people when they're, you know, things are going on. So I'm less disruptive and I could kind of catch the vibe of the scene. The 200 will be here, huge here, but the 2.8 will also be great for the separation. So shooting at 200, 2.8, just to, you know, you got a couple of people talking and laughing and just to blow out the background a little more. I think for future uses, I will actually try this as a portrait lens. I think there's cases where this will really do that. I mean, as I mentioned, I do have my preferred portrait lens, but 202.8 will also have a cool look sometimes. The other great thing about the 200 is just the compression you can get of making distances, you know, look closer. Uh, sometimes at a, I'm at something that's sparsely attended and I'm, that's, I'm trying to get the angles to make it look like there's more people there. Uh, that's what the event organizers want. You know, there's a lot of examples where I could think of where that'll come in handy. I could think of when I've been on the University of Akron's campus. There's a shot I really like with a bunch of these arches they have built and, you know, putting someone there and shooting at 200 and just bringing those distances together. But I could already picture how much better that would even look with something like this. So I'm pretty stoked on this lens, as you can tell. It's something that I've needed. I can't believe I've held off this long. You know, cropping and zooming with your feet is great um, and it has its place, but this is a lens that most professional photographers should have in their arsenal. And I just held off for, like I said, years and years and years. And I'm really glad I made the jump. Uh, the first gig I did with it was a friend's son's birthday party. This was at one of those trampoline parks and it showed exactly why this shines. You know, I've got fast moving subjects, kids, and they had almost no lights on there. I was shooting at like ISO 6400, I think for most of it. So yeah, to have the 2.8 again was awesome. Also kids running around back and forth to be able to stand back and have the 200 and then also get some close expressions, amazing. The next event I had where I used this like crazy, I had two days of there's a foundation, their new CEO was in town from Miami and they were getting a tour of Akron and a lot of the nonprofits that they support. Following around a group like that and just being able, again, whether they were mingling or just not being so close in the room was just fantastic. And again, the separation you get shooting at 2.8 is great and not all the situations were really well lit again. Two things about this lens that have taken me a little bit of trying to get used to and remember is that there is a focus switch for focusing from 1.2, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.
meters to infinity or 2.5 to infinity. I have found the lens is much faster if you have that on the right settings. Um, if you try to focus close and you don't have it on that settings, it'll be, it'll be much slower. So getting that in my head to like switch that depending on what I'm doing is something that's good to remember. The other, there's two other switches, AF versus MF, obviously, autofocus, manual focus, not a big deal for what I'll be doing. Stabilizer, it'll almost always be on since I'll be hand holding, you know, not really using this on a tripod for any reason. And then the two different stabilizer modes. One is for, you know, the more static subject, the thing I'll be doing the most of, because then it's kind of stable, stable as I, stabilizing like the handshake type stuff, whereas mode two is for panning in either direction, and then I guess it works to stabilize, you know, on a plane. I set it to that mode at the birthday party where kids were running around because that was that kind of panning stuff. Um, I haven't used it enough to know the difference if you don't change that, if it has a huge effect, but one of those things where I wanna get the maximum out of this lens I can, so trying to remind myself to take a look at that before I start shooting or consider if things change during an event. So yeah, a lens like this is just making all the difference to me in my career. Like I said, already wish I had it earlier. Um, highly recommend it if you're for some reason still holding off on one of these. I, I was, my last thing in my notes was future uses, but I already kind of covered that, possibly using it for portraits, using it in times when I want to compress dif distances and stuff like that. But I can't imagine heading out to events ever again without this lens. What do you think? If you own like a Canon R or you own, you know, systems that have changed over time, would you go and get an older version and adapt it? Or are you someone who you would just spend the money on the new one? Have you spent the money on the new RF lens? Let me know down below. Um, just getting started out on this channel of posting a video once every week, really trying to find my footing here. I'm a camera nerd, but I have a different YouTube channel that's all about bike stuff and has done pretty well. So if you wanna support this channel and see it grow, check out the little store I have down below, but just give this video a like because that stuff helps out too. Thanks as always for watching. I will see you in the next one. Getting that red line just feels so good. Look like a pro with these white lenses, you know what I mean? <laughs>